Bill Shaken covers the Dodgers for the L.A. Times, covers baseball for the L.A. Times, and he's kind enough to join us. Bill, what did you expect last night between these two teams after what happened the previous night? In any game in a season <laughs> when, you know, the extra inning rule is supposed to get us home pretty early. What happened with uh, Joe Kelly? And I'm, I'm curious the reaction by the Dodgers once they heard the suspension. Well, they weren't thrilled. No team is ever thrilled to have one of its players suspended. But I think it goes back to everything that's happened over the past few months. Because when Rob Manfred issued the suspensions, he was like, you know, the usual corporate executive. Everything's under control. Here's the report. Read what you want to find out. Let's move on. Let's go <laughs> forward. And that might have worked until the Astros had their fan festival in the winter. And the Dodgers were kind of keeping an eye on that, the players were, because they wanted to see how remorseful the Astros might be. And the Dodgers watched the clips from Houston. They certainly did not see any remorse in the comments that they saw on television that the Astros made. And so when the Dodgers had their fan festival the next weekend, they let the Astros have it. And then people thought, okay, great, it's done. We'll go to spring training. The Astros will have a press conference, they'll apologize. And as we might remember from the pre-pandemic era, the Astros had a completely disastrous press conference in which the owner refused to take any accountability. The players are like, you know, it's done. We're not talking about it. And so everybody has been sort of waiting. And at one point in, again, the pre-pandemic spring training, Rob Manfred had a press conference and he said, you know, I think what's going to happen, it's not so much that I haven't punish the Astros, it's that they'll be shamed. And they'll be shamed, as you've even heard, in spring training games. And there were Dodger fans, there was a group of 3,000 Dodger fans that had bought tickets to come boo the Astros in Anaheim. They didn't care about the Angels. <laughs> they just wanted to go boo the Astros because the Astros and Dodgers, remember, we're not supposed to play this season. Well, now there's no fans in the ballpark. So what happens? How do the Dodgers get a chance to say, uh, we remember, and yeah, we're not going to forget that easily. Why Joe Kelly? Joe Kelly is Joe Kelly. And <laughs> as Major League Baseball's uh, press release yesterday noted, he has a history of throwing inside, I believe is how they put it. So he came out, and you know, I think he might have escaped such draconian punishment had he not thrown balls toward three separate Houston hitters. And I'm sure he will go to Major League Baseball and say, well, you know, I'm paying for a prorated salary, so how about a prorated suspension, right? You know, you gave me six <laughs> games a couple of years ago, and there were 162. Now you're giving me eight out of 60. But, you know, Kelly's a guy who, you know, despite whatever you would say publicly, obviously took some pride in standing up for his teammates. And you could tell by the reaction of the Dodgers players, they were certainly not embarrassed by it. Yeah, and this is based off intent, though, Bill. That's what's interesting. So just the intent of throwing or trying to hit somebody is why he got – it feels like the commissioner is still protecting the Astros by saying, if you do this, this is the punishment you face here, but it's not – he didn't hit anybody. He didn't hit anybody, but they looked at a history. And look, if Joe Kelly had thrown one pitch high and inside, maybe it's different. He threw inside to three separate Houston players. He threw high and inside to two. You know, I, other than a lie detector test, I think the video is probably where you say one pitch slip, but four? Oh, I agree. He needed to be suspended for it, especially if you throw up towards the head. I have, I have no patience for that whatsoever. But I'm curious, Dave Roberts got one game. Why did Dave Roberts get one game? Uh, the league said that was because of Kelly's actions. So clearly when Rob Manfred was telling the public, go ahead and shame the Astros, that'll be their punishment. <laughs> he was telling teams even back then, I do not want a festival of retaliation. And here it is the first week of the season. And we don't know how many weeks this season ultimately will last, but if it goes nine weeks and if it goes through 16 teams in the playoffs, major league baseball wanted to make a point very clearly that, Whatever feelings you have about the Houston Astros, please do not express them with 95-mile-an-hour <laughs> baseballs. 
All right, so now we move to September when the Astros come to town. Ta- have, have the Dodgers moved past this, in your opinion? Probably at this point. I, I think they've, they've made their feelings known loud and clear. Uh, nothing is going to happen beyond that. And, of course, as, as we've learned in the past 24 hours, I think um, the Athletic had it first, that the protocols now have been changed because Rob Manfred said, you know, my hands were tied because the only way I was going to get the information from the Astros players was to promise them immunity for their testimony, because I had already issued a memo that said the responsible parties are the manager and the general manager. And remember, those guys are fired by the Astros. Going forward, enough players said this is ridiculous that the league and the union got together and said, yeah, this is ridiculous. And if this happens again, players will be subject to discipline. Yeah, I just wondered if you had former players, since that's how this all started, a former player is the one that had the story about the Astros. Could you have granted them any kind of immunity, or you you probably didn't even need to do that, where you could have punished the Astros? And that was what was surprising, that he he had to give them immunity to get this information. Felt like it was there um, for the taking. Well... The trouble is, and and the league found this out a long time ago when they investigated steroids in the Mitchell report, you can compel a coach or a manager or a club executive to do an interview. You can't compel a player because they're represented by the players union. So the George Mitchell report had a ton of holes, not through anybody's fault on the Mitchell team, but because he said, I've got all this information. I'm going to present what I have. But I asked the players to corroborate, to sit for an interview, to tell me what I got wrong, and they just wouldn't do it. And I think Manfred needed to make sure, look, I've got one guy. I don't know his motivation. Maybe he's a truth seeker. Maybe he's a disgruntled ex-employee who obviously isn't playing for the Astros anymore. I need to corroborate this information. And that's what he had at the time. And again, going forward, that won't be the pattern, but that's what they had and that's what they did. I thought Oral Horsheiser had a great line last night. Was that when El Tuve uh, struck out? And uh, yeah. yeah, then he said it's tougher when you're guessing than when you're knowing what's coming. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Dodgers television station, which is uh, actually a team-owned station, was uh, quite uh, in Mr. Kelly's corner over the last couple of days, and rightfully so. These are you know, employees that are number one paid by the team, but more importantly, these are guys that have played the game. They're respected guys like Oral, Nomar Garcia Parra, Jerry Hairston Jr. And usually you try and modulate what you have to say a little bit, but they were <laughs> no holds barred. You know, you're a Dodger fan and these guys are in your corner. And uh, frankly, a lot of people around baseball thought that Joe Kelly was in the right because if you looked on social media yesterday, it wasn't just Dodger guys that were coming out to support him. It was people like Marcus Stroman, you know, Phil Hughes, Jared Weaver, like guys who have been there that said, you know, this is ridiculous. If he didn't buzz the tower, Bill, if you just hit somebody in the backside, I mean, you accomplish what you want to accomplish, don't you? You do. Um, now, I know Joe said after the game that there was a widely circulated video during the time that the game was shut down. He was at home <laughs> working on a pitch, tried to hit the Hank Aaron pitch back, and he broke his window. So, you know, maybe his control isn't always the best. And, you know, I don't think short of truth serum, you're ever going to find out really how intentional it was. But again, you had three batters and four pitches. And And that was certainly enough for the league. If I ask the residents of Los Angeles, you can have the Dodgers win the World Series or the Lakers win the NBA title this year. Well, if you can assure me that we can get enough people together to have a parade, maybe I'd have an idea. But since we're just going to have to sit at home and watch on Zoom anyway, I'm not sure (laughs) which one would be better, but. Uh, Let's just say there have been a few Lakers parades in this town since the last time the Dodgers won in 1988. The grainy black and white Kirk Gibson videos are great, (laughs) but we've seen enough of them. And and frankly, you know, as players like to say, you never know when you're going to get this chance again. And, And against the Astros, the Dodgers got to game seven of the World Series. And that's as far as the Dodgers franchise has gotten in the last 32 years. 
Good stuff, Bill. As always, safe travels. We appreciate your time. All right. Take care. That's uh, Bill Shaken. He covers the Dodgers baseball for uh, the L.A. Times.